One of the things we offer our OSU horticulture students here at our studio gardens is the opportunity to do an internship. And one of the tasks that we ask them to perform is a short segment to be aired on our show. Well, this year's intern is Dewey Yorman, and he has chosen the topic of cover crops. Hi, my name is Dewey Yorman, and I'm a horticulture student at OSU, and I'm the intern out here at Oklahoma Gardening this year. And today we're going to talk to you about cover crops. And cover crops are a crop grown in your garden during the off-season that are grown to cover the soil and are non-harvested. Today we're going to plant some cover crops here in this plot that normally we grow vegetables or, or fruit in during the spring and the summer of the year. Right now it is empty and we are going to plant some cover crops and talk a little bit about them and their benefits that they can you can use in your own garden. So there are many different types of cover crops that you can use depending on your soil types and your needs. You can plant them to increase the nitrogen of your soil by using a legume cover crop which forms a symbiotic relationship with a bacteria in the soil called rhizobium. The rhizobium and the plant together fix at atmospheric nitrogen in a form that your plant can use the next year. So your peppers, your tomatoes will have more nitrogen growing the next year. You can also increase the organic matter by adding cover crops which grow and then later on you till them in your garden which are called green manure crops. Cover crops can also help retain soil moisture and protect from erosion and other things like that. We, if you can plant a cover crop with a tap root, you can help uh, get through the plow pan or help increase the infiltration of your soil that way. So there are many different types of cover crops you can plant depending on your needs for your garden that can be beneficial for you. Today we are going to plant some wheat that is a winter hardy wheat that's going to grow through the winter time and uh, it's gonna, we're going to keep it mowed down through, through, for about a couple inches so it doesn't get too out of hand and that residue is then going to start decomposing on top of the soil and it's going to add organic matter back to your soil when you have the cover crop on. So we're also going to plant a leguminous crop and legumes most people think of beans or peas and also you can do alfalfas or clovers or hairy vetch and this particular is a clover and you can see that gray substance on the seed there itself that's called inoculant and that is inoculant is necessary for the seed to get established in the soil and to get to grow with the rhizobium and fix the nitrogen. So when you're buying your seed, you want to ask your seed provider if it's already pre-inoculated. You want to get it one that is pre-inoculated. So with that in mind, you select your certain crops that you decide that are best for your garden. And you just, you know, you can grow them that way. And we are going to plant both of them together, which is called intercropping. And we're going to go ahead and get our clover here. And our soil is already kind of loosely aerated, and we're just going to just going to kind of sprinkle it over our soil here in a uniform fashion as best we can. Right here in this area. Just try to get it as uniform as possible with the clover. And then we're going to come back over it with our wheat and plant it right in amongst it. And they're both going to come up together and grow together, which works real well. So you want to plant both of those like that. You can either plant a uh, grain such as a wheat, oats, or barley by themselves, or you can plant the legumes by themselves. And there's many different ways you can do that. So, um, you know, just depending on your soil type and your needs, you know, you can plant them together or separate. So right now, now that we have it in the ground, on the ground, and we're just going to grab a rake here and loosely rake it into the soil to get it contacted with the soil here. Just kind of mix it in real good. Not too deep, not too rough. And then here in a couple weeks, through the fall and the winter months, we're going to have a nice 
green cover crop, which my favorite part of cover crops is having a green specimen out there in your garden growing during the off season. So that's kind of fun to have also. So now we're gonna go ahead and water this in, watch it grow, and good luck with your cover crops.